G'day, Troy Smith here from Real Skills Ag Training. I want to update my Aussie Ready module that I put out last year to try and get the most, the maximum work out of these machines. They cost us a lot of money and uh, we need them to be super productive. So there's a lot of little things and some big things that, that make quite a difference to, uh, to how much work you'll get out of these machines in a day. Let's start with the very newest machines, the 2023 model CP770. One of the big changes was the new style of spindle bar. The central drive shaft is now made of aluminium instead of steel, and it now is held in by a bottom retention bolt instead of a circlip at the top in the older ones. So this is that aluminium drive shaft that's in the new 23 model CP 770s and newer. This is the top. Here's where the first spindles run and it's obviously had a dead spindle that's been running uh, and it's worn that aluminium out. With the gears and the roll pins being made of steel, the aluminium is going to be sacrificed. Uh, and unfortunately in the CP 770s we're seeing the roll pins shatter uh, Adam at Moree Picker Parts is recommending all the roll pins be changed in CP 770s around 600 fan hours unfortunately um, but I'll show you some more damage here we've got another uh, significant wear but here's some of those elongated holes um, where the roll pins been damaged and or split and it's uh, ruined this and then the other thing with these with these new drive shafts the bottom retention bolt here if we just punch on these to remove them out of the spindle bar like we always used to it will deform this and uh, and then over mesh all your gears you'll have to muck around spacing all your spindles out so uh, Adam also recommends that we punch this out using the thread. We uh, weld a bolt to an old steel one, screw it in there and punch it using the thread. If you punch it on that face, uh, you're going to deform that aluminium because it's so soft and wreck your drive shaft. Here's an example of those shattered roll pins that are coming out of the CP770 bars. Uh, and here's some examples of more damage uh, and this is the uh, the punch that Adam's made up with the bolt welded to an old steel drive shaft when it comes to pips for the CP 770 I'm really stoked to hear that they're going to uh, pipe that engine breather on our tier 3 machines uh, I believe it's going to be a catch can style setup, but that breather that was delivering the oily air inside the engine bay definitely had to change. Uh, feeding that oily air into the cotton fans was not good for anything. And uh, so I'm really pleased to hear that that's going to be happening on all CP770s. Most of my clients just piped that breather out the bottom of the belly doors last year. And this left side cotton fan is staying spotlessly clean. That exhaust gas getting sucked into this left cotton fan is just a killer. That's how clean it should look. And the other one that's really good is the 22 models that are running the two strand fan belt on the stripper pulley. That's getting upgraded, I believe, to the 23 models. The strippers only have one cotton fan running off that two strand belt and the smaller pulley. With the CP770 having two fans on that same belt and pulley, it was right at the limit of the belt and they were failing after a very short life. Uh, you'd be lucky to get a couple of hundred hours out of a cotton fan belt. And when they failed and shredded, they had a bad habit of tearing a major wiring harness out of the engine and causing quite a big problem. 
This grower protected those wiring harnesses with that yellow spray hose. Uh, and it's probably worth doing even with the three strand belt fitted, it can still fail and shred. And uh, it's a pretty major breakdown replacing that, uh, that engine harness that it tears to bits. The handler on the CP770s is different to the older machines. The old girls have four beams and cutouts between them that our meter rows kind of fit in. The 770 has five beams and no cutouts. Our meter rows run almost beneath one of the beams and to make matters worse, there's a crossbar that has a forward facing edge, meaning it almost acts as a cutting edge. It fully pulls stalks from the ground and leaves a much bigger gouge than the old machines when you're dropping a module off in the field. And that really did make life harder for the mulchers, root cutters and subsequent operations. People have been fabricating their own handler plate so that it will skid along uh, out of three mil steel. Or a lot of the local engineering works are now uh, folding them up. This one's from Gundy Engineering, I believe. There's a really strange thing with all the CP770s I've seen where the wrap floor belts, it's a V belt, but the back of the belt is running in a V pulley as its idler. Some machines seem to get away with it better than others, but plenty of people reported destroying multiple sets of wrap floor belts before they change to the uh, flat idler. It just makes no sense having the back of a belt running in a V pulley. This is how they all came, and I just don't understand it. Uh, so a lot of clients have changed over to uh, a flat pulley like it should be running on. The part number's here, it's off a mower deck apparently, uh, and you need eight of them. So um, hit pause if you want to see that uh, part number, and um, this is what it should look like. Thanks to Pete Tui from Carathool for working this one out for us. Door blocks in pickers are a real productivity killer, costing time to clear them, but often forcing you to pick at a slower ground speed. And they are a real pain in the ass. Here's two tips for picking really high yielding cotton at the maximum ground speed that we can do in the pre-season that's guaranteed to save your time once that crop's ripe. The first thing we want to do is to maximise that airflow. We're going to do this by shortening the 6 inch and the 3 inch air hoses that supply the chutes. Uh, we just put our heads flat on the ground and shorten them to their minimum and it needs doing uh, more than once but we can do that in the pre-season and then after a few days picking take a little bit more off them. When they're at the minimum length the air gets a straight shot uh, to the chute and it really does help. And the other one is to seal all the little gaps around the air system on the heads uh, that either leak air out or some of the holes allow air to get in that hole instead of forcing it to pull it all past the, uh, the back of the doffers and, and that will help reduce door blocks. So this is the machine at St George that they've, they've done the amazing sealing of the air system and I was in it last night after dark 7.4 k's an hour in, in 14 and a half bale cotton with no door blocks, it, it really is working amazingly. So we've shortened, we've shortened the six inch tube to its, to its minimum when the heads are down. We've sealed around this nozzle, inside and out, all of these joints have been sealed up. Anywhere that we can lose air, 
as well as silicon around these. So all that effort is uh, is adding up to higher ground speed and less door blocks. It's it's really worth it. The other tip that makes quite a difference is to widen the front pressure door out a bit and back its spring pressure right off. The operator's manual says three to six mil and two holes pressure. But the consensus in Australia for that front pressure door is we can get it out to 12 mil from the spindle tip to the pressure door and run that spring pressure at half to one hole. That's going to let a little bit more cotton through to the back drum um, but seems to be still picking the, the plant adequately. It's worth checking that it's still doing a good enough job, but uh, most pickers I see that are running well, yeah, 12 mil wide at the front and half to one hole maximum. For the rear pressure doors, most of the machines I see in Australia have the scrapping plates fitted and are set pretty much by the operator's manual, three to six mil clearance between the spindle and the door and three holes pressure. Here's two of my favourite things in the pre-season that are really going to help out uh, once you get going. They are really good bar heights and baler belt maintenance. Both Adam at Maury Picker Parts and BJ at AFF agree that putting the effort into getting your bar heights to a two thou range which we never used to go to that extreme. But putting that effort in, in the pre-season, you will be rewarded with less component wear, spindles stay cleaner, easier, and greater productivity. It's, uh, it really is worth it. When the baler belts are good, they're very good. But if you break a baler belt in the field, you are in a world of hurt. This tip uh, comes from Ross Munro uh, at the Cotton Collective in Toowoomba recently. He was saying every year, particularly with machines that do a, a fair bit of work each year, he replaces the pins in the baler belts every year. Sometimes there's more than one per belt. And he flips the belts uh, each year so that the wear in the in the um, lace uh, gets even both sides. Clearly we want to check all the belts for damage first but once we know that we're happy with them here's a really cool tip that I learnt last year thanks to Jono about removing those pins the easy way. How good is that? Apparently it's an old miner's trick. The one thing that I didn't talk about there that is the most important thing for productivity is the operator. Uh, and my one day cotton picker training course that I've developed is designed just for that. I bring it to your farm, uh, it's in your shed next to a picker. I play the training videos that I've created over many years operating these machines and uh, we start with safety, we st just how important it is that we survive the day. With the safety, we talk about safety at heights, uh, the roof of the picker, there's platforms without handrails. Safety at heights is a big issue. We talk about power line safety, and uh, they're definitely a risk of interacting with power lines. I actually learned a few things researching power line safety and uh, there's not many of us know exactly what we should do if we hit a power line, so that's a good power line induction. Uh, we go on to talk about all the risks of entanglement, collision, traffic, uh, other people. There's a lot can go wrong with a cotton picker. Uh, talk about the silent killers. Fatigue is always present at harvest to some extent. Rushing and complacency. Um, after safety, we talk about preparing that machine really well, particularly that first day of picking, taking the time to settle that machine in, make sure, you know, watching for leaks, uh, checking the wheel studs, not just 
hooking straight in on day one. Uh, and also how to handle fire. That could happen straight away. I was often forgetting to tell people what to do about fire until a couple of days into picking and probably just got lucky that we never had a fire uh, before I'd taught someone what to do. So we'll discuss fire. Uh, there is a way to handle major fires that we shouldn't see machines lost to fire. We go on then to just mastery level operation. Great turns, height management, speed management, moisture management to get maximum productivity, keep those spindles clean and uh, yeah, maximize that ground speed. We talk about basic maintenance and then we get on to wrap and the function of that round module builder. We, we can demystify it. It's quite, a, it's quite an intimidating thing to new operators. It's, it's hard to really know what's going on inside until you've operated the machines for a bit. Talk about misfeeds, what we're watching for on the cameras to make sure we don't spit an unwrapped or partially wrapped module out and the associated costs that come with cleaning up that mess. Um, it's a real pain. And then finally we finish with uh, a really good blowdown. The blowdown is something that's really easy to miss. A lot of experienced people, or not miss fully, but a lot of experienced people miss important areas and a good blowdown is so important for fire prevention as well as component life that uh, it's really worth nailing your blowdown. So if you'd like to chat about having me come uh, put the training day on at your place or joining uh, one that's happening nearby, please uh, find me on the socials or the email that'll be listed in a sec or call me on 0428 537 200. I look forward to chatting.